Corn School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Bernard Tobin here with Tracy Bowdy, Omafra is an entomologist. Uh, we're going to talk a little bugs, going to talk some insects. Hey, thanks for taking the time. No problem. Thanks for being here. Hey, it's been an interesting year. Cold, <laughs> wet, damp, um, staging of crops is all over the place. What type of impact is that going to have on pests, pressures this summer? It's lining up to be a good pest year yeah. because of that. Um, the crop isn't getting ahead of the pests, so we've seen soil insects be a problem. We've seen early season pests, mainly because the crop is younger. And so they've been able to get at the crop when it's still at a young, um, susceptible stage. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, it's been milder temperatures. We're brewing for a, a storm. <laughs> Hey, a couple of bugs that have been sort of showing up on social media. Growers have been seeing them in their, uh, in their, in their fields. Stink bugs yep. in corn. What are yep. we looking at there? Again, something that um, is here all the time, but doesn't usually get ahead of the, the crop. And, and this year, the crop is still quite young in early bee stages, and stink bug came out of the ground, and especially in no-till fields. Um, and injured. And, and we do tend to see fields show up with that injury, um, usually along the field margins, but it's been more obvious this year. Mm. And so, um, yeah, the guys are noticing it and yeah. send in pictures. What type of impact can that bug have on a crop? Uh, well, usually it's not widespread, so it's usually marginal. Um, nothing you can do once you see the injury, but it does, they put a hormone, they inject a hormone into the plant and the plant starts to grow very differently. It, it deforms and starts to buggy whip. And so those certain plants that have been fed on tend to not outgrow that damage, but uh, typically we don't see a full wide field spread issue that needs mm. spraying. Bill bugs, my good friend, the bill bug. Yes, same thing. Um, pests that's usually not a problem, but in years where it's get, been given the advantage, uh, it's it's doing very similar injury that stink bug does, creating holes and then causing that hormonal response in the plant, and you get that stunting and buggy whipping, and people panic. So again, it's not something you really can manage within that season. It's keeping an eye from next season, trying to plant early, ensure that your seed slots are closed. Um, and just not giving them the opportunity to really take advantage of a young crop. Mm. Now the big conversation here today um, yes. is about western bean cutworm. Yes. Um, you know, I think uh, we're going to have some challenges here with this this year, and yes. especially that that flight that moth flight and that timing as you uh, suggested earlier. Yes, so uh, we're lining up because the corn was delayed in planting for most of the crop to be at the ideal crop stage for the moths to want to lay their eggs. So peak flight usually happens the last few weeks of July, first week of August, and that's when they're going to be ideal in the corn, uh, finding that pre-tassel, tassel stage to lay the eggs. So we think, you know, growers really need to get out and monitor, scout for eggs and determine if they've reached threshold and time it properly. Last Last year caught everyone off guard because it wasn't just the hot spot regions. And that's that's our message here. Don't assume because you're outside of the hot spots of Bothwell and Tilsonburg, you're not at risk. Everyone's at risk. Use traps to determine if they're present in your area and then scout and spray if need be. Mm. Talk a little bit before we wrap it up uh, on yes. fungicide, fungicide timing here. Yes. So important to coat those silks. Yes. So issue last year, um, western bean really doesn't cause as much yield impact as they do allow for the introduction of, of ear molds and um, mycotoxins. So we really want to not only spray with an insecticide to control the insect, but also protect the crop with the fungicide. And so the timing is a little off if you try to um, manage both. But what we're trying to recommend is that you kind of move their timings into the middle where you're going with a tank mix just when those silks are coming out. So you're targeting both insecticide as well as fungicide and protecting the ear from both the insect and the fungus, fun mm. fungus too. Yeah, final question for you. And you know, as an entomologist, how would you like to see the rest of this year go? <laughs> uh, to sort of to minimize it impact. It would be awesome if yeah, the bugs would just go away, but they're not. Mm. Um, I think, not to panic though, mm. everyone's panicking. All of a sudden when they see a soybean aphid on a soybean plant, they're like, oh, we got to spray. Or if I'm finding moths in a, a bucket trap, they've got to spray. That's not the case. We've, we've got scouting recommendations there for the purpose of actually going in, following IPM and managing the pest if it needs to. So, mm. so you're going to be doing a lot more field walks, but yeah. uh, I don't necessarily think every single field is going to have to be sprayed and, and be an issue. So it's just keeping your head cool and, and looking for the pest and following thresholds. Get out, do some walking. Absolutely. It's beautiful weather to do that. Exactly. So and, uh, and take the, the recommended management steps. Absolutely. Awesome. Hey, thanks for your time today. Thank you. <laughs>